All right, so now let's move over to function notation. All right, we've all seen stuff like uh, y equals 2x minus 5. We say that y is written in terms of x when we isolate the y like that and just have x on the other side. All right, so the x is, when we have that written that way, the x is referred to as the independent variable, and the y is referred to as the dependent variable. And that's because if we were to like do a t-chart, you'd plug a number in for x, do the arithmetic on it, and let it tell you what the y value is supposed to be. So the value of y depends on whatever value we put in for x. And that's just why it's called the dependent variable, and x is called the independent variable. All right, so now we're just going to introduce some, some different notation, because looking at this, we don't really know if it's a function or not. We have to go through the idea of put one number in, do you get just one number back for y, that, that's kind of a pain. So we introduce the following notation. Instead of y, we're going to have this f parenthesis x close parenthesis thing. All right, so f, let's talk about what this means. f is the name of the function. So we'll use f, you'll see g, h, r, all kinds of things. Any letter can be used, but really we use f a lot, f, g, and h a lot. All right, x is still the independent variable. This is read as f, whoops, f of x. That's how you read this, f of x. It means the value of f, the value of f at x. So this is how you read it. You'd say f of x equals 2x minus 5. This notation, f of x, means the value of f at x. So, remember when uh, we would um, first graph these things, like y equals 2x minus 5. We, we first graphed those, we did a t-chart. We'd plug numbers in for x, let it tell us what y would be. And so you'd say, all right, what happens when x is 4? And you'd plug a 4 in for x, and you'd do 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 5 is 3, and so, okay, so y is 3. Remember doing that? All right, we're going to do the same idea, only the notation is going to be a little different. Okay, find. Notation looks like the following. We would read that as f of 4. And it means go to, to the f function, find the value of the f function when x is 4. So you go to the f function, which is this one right here, and wherever we see our independent variable x, we plug in a 4. And then do the arithmetic, and you get 3. So f of 4 is equal to 3 or the value of the function f is 3 when x is 4, however you want to you word it there. Um, f of 0. So what the value of f of 0 be? Well, you go to the f function, plug in the 0 wherever you see an x, and you'd get back negative 5. So f of 0 is negative 5. You're really kind of making ordered pairs here. When x is 0, the y value is negative 5, because you can kind of think of this f of x thing, right, as, as y. All right, so uh, we are making ordered pairs here if we, were, if we needed to go graph it. But the value of the function f is negative 5 when x is 0. Let's look at one more example. All right, g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. Find g of 0. All right, so you go plug in 0 for all your x's there, because you go to the g function, plug in 0, and you get back negative 1. So g of 0 is negative 1. All right, what about g of negative 1? So go plug negative 1 in, and you'd have negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. And so what does that go to? 1 minus 2 minus 1 which is negative 2. Okay, so the value of the function g when x is negative 1, the value of the function g is negative 2. And that would be an ordered pair, negative 1, negative 2, if we were to go and graph it. All right, what about g of a? Well, it's not any different. Don't let the 
the a here kind of freak you out. It's the same idea. Find the value of the function g when x is a. And all that really means to do is to go to the g function, and wherever you see an x, plug in a. So we would have a squared plus 2a minus 1. And that's just all we can do with it. This is the value of the function g when x is a. Same idea when we have a bigger expression like x plus 3. Right? We want to evaluate the function g when x is replaced with x plus 3. So we go up here and we say, all right, we've got x plus 3. We want to plug that in for x. So we have x plus 3 squared now plus 2 times x plus 3 and then minus 1. And then we can simplify it. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 2x plus 6 minus 1. And all that goes to x squared plus 8x 15 plus 14. So this is a new expression because you're evaluating, you're putting an expression into a function, you're going to get an expression back. The point being is that it doesn't matter what you want, let's do an e, it doesn't matter what you want to evaluate your function of. So if you did g of say a smiley face, the concept stays the same. You go to the g function and wherever you see your independent variable, you plug in, in this case, a smiley face. So you would have smiley face squared plus 2 times smiley face minus 1. And that's just what the expression would be. There's nothing else you can do about it. It does not matter what you want to evaluate your function with. Uh, just make sure you put that expression in to uh, all the places where your independent variable exists. All right, the point of using function notation instead of y is that uh, this, when we use this notation, we know for a fact that what we have here is a function, which means if we put one number in for x, we definitely get back only one number for y. So function notation tells us, hey, this is a function, where if we used y, we would have to do a, a little bit more work to figure out if y was indeed a function of x. I hope this helps. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.